Good evening and welcome to day three of the Komui WPA Women's World Nine Ball Championship in the Convention Center at Harris Casino in Atlantic City. We have a great match for you tonight between Jasmine Ocean and Christina Takash. And your referee for this match is Mr. Dwayne Payne. And the timekeeper for the match is Angela Williams. I'm Tony Robles and joining me for this match is Keith Paradise. How are you, Keith? I'm doing great, Tony. Looks like the potential for a really good match here between uh, Jasmine and Christina. Yeah, this is a the 16, the last 16 single elimination stage portion of the tournament. So since we're down to the nitty gritty here, the last 16, the races have been extended to nine. Race to nine, and it looks and like single elimination. Pretty textbook break here. Uh, wing ball flies in. Have the five ball going in the opposite corner, and she's dressed up pretty nicely on that one ball. Yeah, I think she, she achieved an angle in the one ball to the point where it helps her get to the two. Just one rail, slightly past the spot. And these are the shots that I think are important for people to understand how softly you must hit the ball when you're going from such a steep angle in the side pocket because it increases the chances of the ball just dropping, the weight of the ball dropping, making it drop. See how that she mm -hmm. hit the outside, but it still dropped. Right. Now, had she hit that with uh, with more speed, it would have just hit that point and just come right back out. Going to go to the center of the table here, I think. Oh, she ran into the nine. She got in a little bit bit of trouble when she pocketed that two ball. Yeah, with, by overcutting it, she lost the speed of the cue ball. Right. And then she had the bridge over the eight. That didn't do her any favors. Let's see, she's going to draw one rail across over, I mean, above or below the eight ball. Right there below the eight ball. Very nicely struck. Yeah, she got right back in line on that one. Little follow here. Nice light touch. Oh, you decided to go. Guess that's a her preference. What were you thinking she was going to do? I thought she was just going to roll it, like maybe a ball width or two. You know, but some people just like, you know, some players just like to stun follow it. So a break and run for Christina takes her, uh, takes her, gives her a one nothing advantage. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering how these two players got here, Jasmine opened up in the opening round with a 7-1 victory over Meng Hisai Hung. Uh, she got down early in the second round against Karen Kaur. She was down 4-0 early, fought back and won that match hill-hill. But then last night she lost 7-2 to Melanie Sussenguth. This morning she uh, came back on the one-loss side, responded with a 7-4 victory over Caroline Powell. For Christina... Well, Christina's about to break right here, so we'll go through her tail of the tape here in just a moment. Thanks for the info there, Keith. Appreciate that. And we'll do the traffic report on the sevens. So. <laughs> Let's see if that corner ball goes in, and the three ball banks one rail into the side. Well, the three's going there long go. now. If the corner ball went in. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't end up with a shot on the two ball. I don't think those spread the way she wanted. We have a cluster of the four and the nine, and you know, cue ball tied up with the five. Yeah, situations like this nowadays, the way the game has evolved, evolved, um, it's tough to just move the cue ball in front of the five by like six inches and and leave a jump shot because nowadays everyone's so good at the mm -hmm. jump shot. That's why she's pushing over there instead of trying to leave the jump because she's, she'll end up leaving an angle, perfect angle, if Jasmine decides to take the shot. And our question here is, is a nine goal? 
That can she does she have an, 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 an a dead billiard where if she were to have the two go off the four, it'll automatically cut the nine into the corner? Maybe we can get a different view from here. Yeah, I can't tell from that view. I can't but either. There's a good chance here. There's a very good chance she might be able to make that. She's thinking about it. Twelve seconds. She's probably gonna oh she gave it back. Okay. I mean, she could always just tap it really lightly and put the two in front of the four nine in the cue ball by the long rail. Oh, she decided to go the other route. Mm, that was trickier because now you have to contend with getting by the eight and the five. The bank is there for the side pocket. Yeah, Do I don't you go for that? Or? It, I, I would go for it if I think that the four nine is dead. If not, I would play safe underneath the four and a nine. Just like that. I'm gonna be honest with you, if I'm if I'm jumping at this, I'm gonna try to jump and bank that two ball one rail towards the nine. Just in case it happens to go off the four and the nine. I might have a shot. I might have a chance of making it. I think that's what she tried to do. Unfortunately she double hit it. Would have been interesting to see if it went towards the nine. What are your thoughts on, on jumping over that four nine as opposed to kicking one rail or pit or maybe two? Well, I feel like when you're jumping, you have more control over what you do with the cue ball. If, if, if you want to hit the ball on this side or on that side or dead on, high, low, center. See, now let's see what she's going to do here. Let's see if she's going to go for the billiard. If she does go for the billiard, she needs to leave the cue ball slightly past the center of the table to the point where it's by the first diamond over the top rail where she's at right now. Because if she leaves it on that side of the table, it might make it more difficult. There you go. It might make it more difficult for her to get the four out of the way before the nine reaches the pocket. Because you don't, you don't want to shoot a billiard and then the nine's heading towards the pocket and then the four runs into it on its way there. Kind of defeats the purpose. Mm. Mm. She went for it, but undercut it, which means she needed to hit the fourth thinner. She was just a hair too thick. I wonder if Christina can hit the bottom of the cue ball and draw underneath the eight from here. Oh, she can cut it in. Yeah, if she can cut it in, that, that, that would be great if she can avoid running into the seven. Don't want to hit the edge of the seven and scratch in the opposite corner. She hit that kind of hard, though. Now, this is, this is, this is what I love to watch. When, whenever Christina, she's one of the best in the business. She's going to shoot this five ball. And notice how she, I don't even think she'll move a hair in her body and that's why she's so deadly accurate with tough shots watch how she doesn't move at all look at that dead yeah. center love watching her play it's one of the best I've seen when it comes to the fundamentals now this could prove to be trick well no I take that back now she's going to go with inside spin and go to the opposite side or take the longer shot in the eight ball oh look at this you call that one there <laughs> you call that one there Keith <laughs> that, or I, be tricky. that or I jinxed her yeah take your pick
Well, just looking at the angle that she had that she needed to get down for the eight ball, just it, it mm -hmm. didn't look like a natural angle to me. Yeah. Unless she's going to bank the uh, the seven towards the eight and lead the cue ball uptown. Yep. Lead her uptown, bank it towards the eight. I know she was, she striped mightily to try to lead that ball underneath the eight so she can't yeah. see it at all, but... Right here, she might be able to come off the rail and use the eight as a stopper to stop the seven there and send the cue ball back up here. She has to hit the eight ball dead square. Just like that. Let's see if the eight ball will block it. And it does. <laughs> what yeah, a fantastic shot. Speed. That was such a great shot. Now, what do you do in this situation? Would you kick towards where she was just standing? Yes. Trying to push the seven ball towards the nine, knowing that you have that nine there, that maybe if you catch it, it could carry them in? Yes, because having the nine there makes the pocket bigger. I'm actually surprised she's going this route. I mean, she's probably trying to kick and stick two rails, but she hit half of the ball. Let's see if she gets lucky. She might have gotten lucky here. I think she did. But you never know. You know, there are players like Jim Rempe from the back in the days. He used to shoot those shots at that speed. So if the seven doesn't go in the corner pocket, he hits mm -hmm. it with just the right speed to keep that seven near the center of the table. He's going to go for the nine here, I think. Nope. Surprise. Surprise she didn't go for the nine ball there. I mean, I think it was close enough, and I think she had the proper angle because the angle she had, she could have played the seven ball and leave it by the first diamond right before the side pocket, leave her with an awkward angle. She didn't make the nine. She failed to make the nine ball. Well, this shot here is pretty much the equivalent of the nine ball because if you make this, the nine ball is dead. It's almost a guaranteed win. Even though there's no such thing as a guarantee in this game. But this is as, probably as close as you can get. Uh, we have a 1-1 one, one tie. So Christina. After rack number two. Christina leaves an opening and Jasmine walks right through it. And we will be back in one minute. And we're back. Jasmine to break the balls. Let's see if that corner ball goes straight in. Jasmine's been break, breaking really well this event. Probably one of the major reasons why she's still in, Keith. Jasmine breaks really well, period. Does she need to hit him that hard? I don't <laughs> think so. Because that corner ball is going to go in regardless. And if you notice the entire event, most of the players have been controlling position for the one ball in the upper right hand corner pocket with the right. cue ball. So by hitting at that speed and not going in the side and hitting the point, it caused the one ball to come down table. You ever, ever watch Jeffrey DeLuna break? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love watching them break. Well, I guess she's going to go one rail and leave it by the side rail. The Luna probably has left holes in people's ceilings <laughs> from how yeah. high that leg kick goes. Yeah. I was talking to Christina before the match, and um, you know, Derby started yesterday, mm -hmm. and Fedor's down at Derby. And I asked, I said, I assume you're going to Derby after this. She said, no, I'm going home. She's flying back to Russia to see her family for about a month. Oh, wow. And then she'll be back in Vegas. Oh, wow. So Good for her. Obviously, She's since probably dying to see him. Very much so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know Jasmine's going to take full advantage of this one. She's probably going to set up an almost dead straight angle on the one to draw back to the top rail. Just barely missed that one. Pretty sure she was expecting it to come a little shorter than that, given the speed that she hit it with. And just enough angle to avoid a scratch, but not run into the five. Well executed. Which is exactly yeah. Which is exactly what she did. So let's see what she decides to do with the five ball. I like going to the center of the table. I like sending the cue ball towards the rail and leaving it on the rail on the left hand long rail and going two rails past the five. I like going two rails past the five. You know, you, you know how some players, uh, myself included, love to go towards the ball that I'm shooting next as much as possible. This is pretty much the same method, except you're going away from the ball, but you're still on that same line. Mm -hmm. She decided to go one rail. So maybe she didn't feel comfortable coming around the five ball, which surprises me. I'm wondering if she was worried about bumping the eight. She might have to draw right before the side pocket with left hand spin. If she can avoid the eight here, hit it with foul and go three rails and leave the cue ball by where her elbow is right now, just like that. She can get off the rail, she has more options. So you think coming one rail up to the center of the table for the seven? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. It's tricky because if you try to go past the seven, you have to come dangerously close to the side pocket in order to make sure that cue ball gets between the nine and the seven. So I think that's what she's thinking about. So she's, she's thinking of either risking it or hitting it, taking the risk, hitting it with a ton of spin. Don't want the cue ball curving into the side pocket. Very nice. She hit that for all it was worth because it didn't look like she can even get past that nine. I mean, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> See, she barely right, grazed so the nine. Grazed yeah. That. She buzzed the tower. So the question is, is she going to go one rail to that side and possibly come off the second rail? Or is she going to go back and forth? Back and forth. It's very nice. That way you can let your stroke go a bit. Now she just draws. If she's straight, draws it straight back to the long rail. Straight back. You know, this is assuming she doesn't have an angle that would take her to the side, which it looks like it does. So she has to hit this with follow now. Following a ton of right, two rails. She doesn't look pleased with that. Yeah, no, she she tried to get closer. The ball the boss slid on her a bit.
Very nice. Yeah. Almost look one of, like one of those sudden death uh, spot shots. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jasmine takes the lead by the score of two to one. For Christina Takach, she got to this point in the tournament by winning her opening round match against Angeline Takalo, 7-1. She then defeated Veronique Menard, 7-5. And then early this morning, or excuse me, early, late last, last evening, she lost to Jin Hai Ju, 7-6. This morning, she rallied on the one-loss side of the bracket, defeating Ho Yum Chen, 7-5 which brings us to right now, the final 16 here at the Kamui WPA Women's World Nine Ball Championship at Harris Resort and Casino in Atlantic City. Rack four, Jasmine Ocean preparing to break. She controlled the one ball there. She heard what you said about <laughs> her last break. But she she said, I'll Tony. show you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Mark White's famous words, we're watching poultry in ocean. <laughs> Did you openly boo him when he said that? <laughs> no, I, when I, when Why I, not? When I, told her, when I told her about <laughs> it, she <laughs> lost her mind. She loved it. But then one other guy told me it was corny. <laughs> I'm on his team. He, he, he said, keep your day job. <laughs> I'm on I team. Said, I didn't I, come up with it. I'm just the messenger. <laughs> I'm on team corny. <laughs> Over here, she wants to draw back about six inches, seven inches maybe. Oh, she wasn't straight. Ooh, she almost overhit that. She had an angle there. Oh, does she have an angle here? Oh, she does. Yeah, that's a perfect angle. That's better than being straight. Because if you were straight, you would have to worry about running into the eight. Looks like just enough draw. to push her up table. She was pretty straight in on that one as well. Come off one rail here. Stop the cue ball slightly past where the four ball is now. And then this is one of those player preference shots. If you are playing in an older, worn out cloth and you have a slightly fuller hit, you can go two rails. But this is too thin of a hit and the table sliding too much for you to even consider something like that. You definitely want to come off the top rail and straight down the table, just like that. And it's less movement of the cue ball that way. Do you ever notice the players that have l less movement of the cue ball are the ones that are not the most? <laughs> Getting less trouble, let's put it that way. They're well, they're not trouble. trying to do as much. Hmm. Two rails here. I like drawing off, off the cushion and going towards that nine a bit here. Oh, she doesn't have to. I thought she was straight. Even better yet. And this is to take a three to one lead. Talking about three to one lead, we are going to take a two minute break and we'll be right back.
and we are back. Jasmine will break the balls with a 3-2-1 lead over Christina Takash. Let's see if she controls that one ball again, Keith. Well, the cue ball got kicked. Yeah. So the question is, will she have a shot? Doesn't look like it. I mean, she really went into those. And that's the whole thing. If, if she hits it, half that speed. I don't think she ends up hitting the one ball on the left side and losing control of the cue ball like that. Because one thing about the nine ball break that you discover for years, you've had players say, oh, I got unlucky. The mm -hmm. cue ball got kicked in the corner. Not right. paying attention to the fact that since those balls always go to the left-hand side of the table, if you hit the left-hand side of the one and the cue ball goes to that side, chances are one of those balls is going to end up kicking the cue ball regardless. Right. Now, we are hand racking. Mm -hmm. um, they are not allowed to check the rack as far as I know, right? That's correct. So I'm wondering if that plays into her strategy of I can't check the rack. Their hand rack, it's not template. I'm just going to hammer these as hard as I can. Yeah, it's a possibility. Although, as we've discussed, with Jasmine, she does that regardless. Yeah. See, what I would do is I, I would test the waters. I would test the table, see how they're racking, see how they're breaking. And if I feel like I can't make a ball in the break, then I would ramp up the speed. She's going to bank this one rail, stop the cue ball there. Unless she's going to play safe behind the four and a six, I would be surprised because it's a pretty easy bank. Oh, she went for the side. Hmm, the bank looked like it was on. Maybe we can take another look at that. Yeah, yeah. the bank looked like it was on. Because she, she, what I liked about stopping the cue ball there is she doesn't have any traffic to contend with right. to come back for position on the three. But when she left the cue ball there, she, she has to work a little harder to play position if it's even possible. And right now, Jasmine hit that so well that if she comes off the rail and leaves the cue ball slightly above where the two ball is now, she'll end up with a perfect angle of the three to come across the table for the four ball, where she might not even have to shoot the four-six combo. Just like that. Just like that. Now she leaves the cue ball near the second, preferably the first diamond, closest to the top left-hand corner pocket. She ends up with prime position because, I mean, the seven is above the eight, so it's almost impossible to not play position on the eight. Let's see if she got there because she might have come short. No, she's good. Looks, yeah, she's good. Like perfect speed. She's good because even if she hits a six, she's going to hit it so thin where she doesn't have to worry about not playing position on the six ball. Just like that. Oh, wow, she hit it fuller than what I thought she was, but I thought she was going to hit that with more inside spin to spin out. Yeah, she hit it fuller. I, if I know I'm going to hit that full, I'm going to hit it with more inside spin so that the cue ball has a little more speed coming off the rail. It's not impossible. It's not impossible to play position. It's just that it's a difficult cut. It's going to have to hit this really good. She might have to go back and forth. Hit one, two, three rails, possibly four, to come back for the seven. This is a key shot here. One, two, three, and straight on the seven. Oh, here all she has to do is focus on just making, making the, seven the seven ball. Yeah. Position on the eight is automatic, automatic if you shoot it with stop shot speed. Q elevated doesn't help. Mm -hmm. 
How good you hit that one, Keith? <laughs> she heard me. Yeah. Whew. I'll show that, Keith. Yeah. She heard you about the break. She heard me about that shot. Yeah, she comes to me after the match, says, Tony, I need to talk to you. I said, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't know. No, we were just joking around. She's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 one of my favorite people to talk to in this business. And Jasmine starting to take command of the match, building up a 4-1 to one lead against Christina. All Christina can do is just sit down, wait for her next turn, and take full advantage of it because she is more than capable. Having watched Jasmine in her match about this time last night against Melanie, she looks a lot more composed right now than she did yesterday where it seemed like she was really struggling to find any kind of rhythm or any kind of momentum. Yeah, she looks comfortable. She looks calm, relaxed, and confident. Four one lead. Let's see where this break takes us. Oh, let's see if uh -oh. that four saves her. If the four saved her. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of rolls that you need to win a tournament sometimes. See, look at that ball. Going right towards there. Please hit it. Please hit it. <laughs> believe me. I believe me. It's in her mind. Please hit it. Now, what kind of safety are you p playing here? Are you trying to pin the cue ball up against the eight? Um, if I can freeze it on the eight. So to where it makes it more difficult, yes. Um, I think she's thinking of, of pocketing it in the side, maybe using the four as a stopper for the three. No. no she was trying to put it behind the four. Looks like she got the blocker with the three ball, though. Yeah. I like her choice. I think that definitely was a better shot because she created more separation between the cue ball and the two ball. If had she just shot a stop shot on the eight ball, the two is just too close to the eight ball, giving, her, giving Christina a, possible, a much easier shot. Now, don't be surprised if Christina jumps and makes this ball. Christina has uh, as good a complete game as Jasmine. Hit it dead on. Did she leave it? Yep. She left her a shot. Not an easy one. She might have to play return safety. Let's see how comfortable Jasmine feels about Cutting this ball in. She just she took doesn't. her extension. Because she would have to go straight up and down and then stop by the side pocket for the three ball. She doesn't feel comfortable with that, then she's, she's going to play safe. Undercut it, but she might have gotten away with it. She got away with it, yeah. Yeah, see if we can get a better view to see if she can see that two ball. She might be able to cut it in, Keith. I think she might be able to, she, she I might think see enough. the three is the, just barely there. Well, she's going for it, so maybe. Yeah, so she's probably going to go up yeah, and down. She can't see it, I take that back. Up and down by the four and the eight. Oh, she overcut it. She overcut that one. I mean, she hit it so thin, she hit it on the way back up. She hit it twice.
Now Jasmine needs to lead the cue ball closer to the top rail to the point where she can hit the four dead solid. The other option is she's able to hit enough of the eight ball where she can draw at a slight angle with low right hand speed and hit the, the uh, long rail. She can come right in between the six and the seven. That's the other option that I see there. Like I said, she leaves it near the top rail. She's good as gold. So just put draw on this and slide it down the table? Yeah, I mean, she might want to slide it. She might want to slide it between the six and the seven. Uh, the only other thing that I see is, is uh, hitting it and playing the six in the opposite corner. But slide it right between the six and the seven. I don't know if she hit it too low. She did not. She's good there. She's actually perfect. Now go one rail about where the side pocket is with about a 30, 45 degree angle on the seven. Came, yeah, um, I think almost came a to a 90 degree angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here she's either gonna go with a lot of speed and go across twice, one, two, three or she's gonna hit it really super soft with low right and just come off two rails. Let's see what she decides to do here. One, two, I don't think that's gonna be enough speed there, Keith. No. She had to hit it with more speed than that for sure. See the angle she has, I'm wondering. She Is might she be able to go four rails off the side of the eight and play the place a cue ball behind the nines. It's too tough to do that. She might be better off just banking in one rail in front of the nine, leaving the cue ball by the top right hand corner pocket. Oh, she just hit it thin. Huh? Good shot there. Yeah. So you know why I don't I, I, I didn't consider that? Because I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the edge of the ball the way she can. I try to hit that ball the same as she did. I'm leaving that ball in front of the pocket all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the bank here by Christina. She's, she's got to go for the bank here. Safety is just as hard as a bank. Look at Nailed that. It. Look at that. Beautiful. This is a big shot here. <coughs> beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Watch the fundamentals again, Keith. Awesome. What a fantastic shot that was to bring it within 4-2. Wow, just wow, that was great. And we are going to take a two minute break and we will be right back.
and we are back. Christina Takash to break the balls. Down four to two, trying to make something positive happen here. Off the break. But you see how she didn't hit it with a lot of speed? Look how she controlled that one ball. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked yeah. about in the first match we did together. Mm -hmm. Where if you don't get the one ball to cut into the side, it dresses up for that corner pocket. Mm -hmm. Now she's just going to come off one rail for the three in the side. Perfect angle on the three to get straight on the five ball. It's going to be a very quick rack here. Yeah, there's really no difficulties on this table. Yeah, probably going to draw it back about four inches from here. Just so that she can shoot a stop shot on the six ball. Then come off one rail. Don't see any issues here. Now she's going to go two rails. Change her mind. See, she started queuing up and then went down. Surprised she didn't get up since she changed her mind. Afraid of the nine, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. Just like that, Christina makes it four to three. I say just what the doctor ordered. In record for her. time. Some other scores from around the room. Uh, Jin Hai Ju four one over Chia Hoon Chen. Allison Fisher and Wang Wan Wan Ling Wang tied two two. Chihiro Kawahara three nothing over Pia Filler, and then obviously this match is four to three. Earlier, um, Kelly Fisher sh survived a scare from Melanie Sussenguth, defeated her 9-4. Sua Sua came from behind to beat Yuki Hiraguchi 9-7. Good win for her. Yeah. Reigning uh, World 10-Ball Champion Che Yu Chow won Hill Hill over Wu Jin Lee. Wow, Hill Hill, huh? Hill Hill. That 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 was a great matchup. There were some really tight matches right before we came on the air for this one. Those 4 p.m. matches were really. Good. I believe it. I want to say Yuki was up seven to three when I walked away. Wow. Nice controlled break there again from Christina, which is why she has a shot on the one and an open table, very nice open table. This is going to be another quick one. Hope she didn't hit it. She, I mean, overhit it because it looked like she did. Yep. Yeah. Just go between the four and the seven and come right back out to where the two boys, more or less. Overhit it a bit. So she might end up a little straight in the three than what she wanted to, but she might be able to stun it or power stun it across the table. Let's see. Oh, she can go follow here. She doesn't have an angle where she has to worry about going behind the seven. Still shorter than she wanted mm -hmm. to be, but she still has the open shot and the angle that she wants. But see, so she has those incredible fundamentals. That's why she makes most of the tough shots. I 
And just like that, she's back in line. Christina is making a big statement here, letting everyone know I might have been down four to one, but I'm not going anywhere. That was a very nice response from her because this could have gotten away in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So we're one ball yeah. away from being all tied up at four. And there you go. Very nice shooting. Christina Takach has won the last three racks in a row to tie up this round of 16 match here at the Kamui WPA Women's World Nine Ball Championships here in Atlantic City. And what, what an amazing tournament it's been the first three days, Keith. I, we've seen nothing but top-notch. I mean, I, I can only imagine every top player that came here to play work ridiculously hard on their game in order yeah. to prepare for this tournament because that, that's just how well they're playing. So here we go, race to five from here. She has a shot at the one. Not a particularly easy shot at the one, but a shot nonetheless. What would you do here, Tony? Go into this side, or would you be looking at a safety option? I don't think it goes in the corner. With, oh, the, Michael, if it goes in the corner, you have to shoot this in the corner, Keith. But if it doesn't, the side might not be a bad shot as long as she can She can not overhit the ball. She, she doesn't have an angle where she has to worry about not overrunning the cue ball. So she has to hit this super, super soft with barely enough speed so the ball barely drops into the pocket. Barely drops into the pocket. Oh, but she overcut it. And th the bad thing about that shot is almost always when you miss it, you sell out. Right. But she was feeling good. She, you know, she had run a couple of racks in a row, so she decided, hey, let me go for it. I feel good. So I don't, I don't really blame her for that in that sense. You know, sometimes I was saying this to Mark a couple of days ago, that just because you miss a shot doesn't necessarily mean that you took the wrong shot. Doesn't look like there's any potential roadblocks on this table. The five and the nine are near one another. Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily call that tied up. Nothing. Especially with the four ball on that side of the table. Yeah, I, I agree, Keith, because if, if she gets even that straight, I would try to get that straight on the four here, so all I have to do is draw back to about the first diamond past the side pocket. But even if she didn't, she could just draw back, period. See, but if she gets straight and draws back by where the fi first diamond is, past that side pocket, she should be in good shape from there. And even if she got that straight, she could draw to the rail and back. Very nice, right by that first diamond. Perfect angle. I was right going to say just enough angle to get over mm -hmm. to the six.
I like coming off the bottom rail here if she has an angle. Oh, no, she's going to probably no, play in the same pocket. Oh, but she came short. She came short. She let up on it a bit. Wound up raising her tip up a bit. And I, I don't know. It's just I like playing percent. I'm a percentage type of position player. If I have a slight angle like that, I'm just going to hit it with follow and come off the sec, the bottom rail and the long rail. Just it's just you have way more room for error that way. What about drawing back a couple inches and going into the opposite corner? Yeah. Well, if you're going to draw that way, it's almost it's always a little easier if you have a little bit more of an angle so that way you can come off the rail, mm -hmm. right? Very nice. Very Covered nice, nicely. Jasmine. I'm going to mess with her after this match. I'm going to say, Jasmine, I give draw, draw lessons if you need them. <laughs> when I do joke with them, I only joke with them if they won the match. <laughs> if they lose the match, I do not say a word. <laughs> oh, you, you got to steer clear for a couple minutes. <laughs> Sometimes even longer. four ball. I'm telling you, she just broke with less speed. She would control that one ball. It almost looks like yeah. she has backed off a little bit. The leg kick isn't happening. Yeah. I think that was more of a case of the, uh, the cue ball going in that direction, but speed does have something to do with it. Going to give her an awkward angle here. I uh, try to tie it up. Off. She didn't tie it up, but but she did accomplish the goal of giving the awkward angle because there's no real easy path onto the two ball from here. Yeah, I mean she she could try to go three rails and put her underneath the five and the six, or hit it super soft to go two rails and take a longer shot on the two. Right? Two rails and the longer shot on the two. There it is. Whew. Boy, did she hit that good. She just made me look silly now, didn't she? But it's those fundamentals. I'm telling you, they're so, so rock solid. She reminds me a lot of Allison Fisher. Because I've always considered Allison Fisher to have one of the best set of fundamentals, I, I think, in the history of the game. Got a little straighter than what she wanted to. She might be able to go with following two rails or draw back about a foot or two and then just cut it and go past the six ball. Don't want to hit it too hard. Don't want to jar the oh. ball. Don't want to jar the ball. That's been happening a lot with the draw. See, if you have a slight angle like that, I think it's to your benefit to shoot those shots more with follow. Because with the draw, you have to just hit it a little harder to make sure you maintain that backspin. Lost opportunity there for Christina, but she might be upset now, but she's going to let that mistake go, and she's... Ready, she'll be ready to pounce the table when she gets her next opportunity, Keith. Come on, one rail here. 
Just going to shoot the eight ball down the rail into the corner. Very nice, very nice This to take a 6-4 lead. Back up by two games once again. Let's talk about the number two, two games. We're going to take a two-minute break, quick two-minute break. Be right back. And we're back, even though Christina isn't back yet. Jasmine Ocean sitting in her chair, waiting for the opportunity to break again. While we're waiting for Christina re to return, we, uh, we just received word that Pia Filler was trailing three games to one in her match, and then executed back to back nine balls on the break to tie the match at 3-3. Wow. Being that she's in a casino, she may want to go play a slot machine <laughs> after her match is done. <laughs> or at the very least, buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> it's funny stuff. This coming from a gentleman that did stand-up comedy for seven years, you said? Yeah, but I'm here now because I wasn't that funny. <laughs> One ball almost went. Yeah. But see, even if she, you see, look how hard she hits it, right? Boom, right? She doesn't hit it that hard. The one ball doesn't travel down that far, and the cue ball doesn't travel up that high because of the fact she took speed off of it. Oddly enough, look, I mean, you hit them that hard because you want them to spread effectively. That doesn't look all effectively spread to me. You have the one and the nine clustered. You have the four and the seven <coughs> clustered. Everything's just kind of clumped up in the center of the table. Mother, she's going to either go for the one and come off the nine with spin or for the two or just bank it one rail past the six and use the nine as, as a guide to possibly keep it in the bottom rail. See, this is why I'm no good at this game. I would totally take on that one ball. <laughs> you have to play percentages. 
you know, if you have a, a dangle like this where you know if you hit the one, you're going to hit the nine, like half of it, and you can slow this cue ball down, then it might be worth it to go for the shot. Just like that. Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> it was a great shot. But if you have an angle on that one ball where you're going to hit the nine dead square and it's just going to completely stop the movement of the cue ball, then it's not worth it. That's when you play right. the safe. <clears throat> now she just draws back a bit. Oh, she decided to go for the side. Yeah, she would have to hit a little harder than that to get the angle that she wanted in the side. Now she's going to have to come around. Maybe even just bump the seven a bit, take the longer shot on the five. Kind of like that. Place the seven a little bit closer to the rail. Only thing I don't like about it. Oh, she didn't even run into it. That's even better. Wow. No, that's even better. The, the reason why high right English it looked like. Yeah, and the reason why that's better is because by not moving the seven towards the rail, you don't lose the potential of possibly pocketing the six in the upper right hand corner pocket. Should you not get perfect on the six if you're trying to play inside. She's good there. Yeah. I like hitting this with low left and bringing the cue ball to the left side of the table for the seven in the same side pocket or even in the corner. Just have all that room on that side of the table. Very nice. I just shoot it in the corner. And so far, Keith, the, the the key to the last three games for Jasmine has been that one mistake that Christina made. Right. Okay, now Jasmine leads the match by the score of seven to four and is two racks away from advancing to the next round. Quite the afternoon we've had here. Started with 32 competitors this morning. And when we walk out of here tonight, we'll be down to four. Semifinals will be tomorrow beginning at 8 a.m. local time. And the finals are scheduled for, I believe, 4 p.m. local time. Right. So we have the first match, the first semifinal taking place tomorrow at 10 a.m. And immediately following the 10 a.m. match, we have the second semifinal, and then, as you said, the final 4 p.m. And she's ready to pounce that table. <laughs> Got a shot on the one there. Uh. Yeah, now I don't know if she can make it. You jinxed her. Yeah. Let's see if she can. We'll have a better look. Mm, nope. No. Just enough two ball to block the angle. So Christina may get another opportunity at the table here, depending on what Jasmine does and how she plays this. Yeah, I'm wondering if she's thinking of backing at two rails, hopefully behind the nine ball. 
and she can. She it looks like she can hit the two thin enough to spin it past or behind the four ball within that area. Maybe even miss it. Maybe even miss it completely. I kind of like that. I kind of like that two rail going past the nine. As long as you get past the nine, if you run into the nine, one ball could potentially end up in front of the pocket. Other option is bank it in. Did she get lucky? Almost oh. did, yeah. No, she got unlucky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was, that, was, that was very hard to control there. Very, very hard to control. And now we get to see what Christina has up her sleeve. Last He's just going to hit about a quarter of the ball here and just slide it to the center of the table. Just enough. Not come off one rail with the four ball. Ooh, <laughs> undercut that one a bit. I mean, the good thing about undercutting is you get to slow down the cue ball a bit, but you put yourself in a bit of a scare. I think that was a bit more than a scare the way <laughs> at that point, especially yeah. for her. So you go right across for the six in the same pocket. Now he's going to power draw it one rail to this past the center of the table. Just don't overcut it because if not, you go right towards that side pocket. And here, it looks like she has an angle to go twice across. Uno, dos. There you go. Don't be surprised if she wants three again, and then we end up I having gonna, a seven-seven. That wasn't what I was on the verge of saying <laughs> earlier. The last time, you know, Jasmine gave her an opening. Well, I like her she chances. She took a four-one deficit and tied the match. Well, I like her chances because of the fact that she's breaking softer and controlling that one ball. And there you go. She earns one back to cut the deficit to seven to five. She's looking like she's saying, I'll be back. <laughs> Saw Christina blowing on her hands, trying to warm them up. It's actually warmer in this room than it normally is. I've been feeling cold in this room, really in the entire hotel all day long. And I, 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 had, I have a shirt and a jacket on. Let's see her, let's see if she controls that one ball. There it is. Fortunately, the cue ball went above. So no three pack, no two or three pack here, Keith. She's gonna have to come up with a safe. I like drawing 
possibly not just behind the four, but oh, oh, she can bank this. I was gonna say, yeah, she can bank this. Yeah, I thought she had way too much angle. She could, she definitely gonna bank this. I'm surprised she didn't bank it because she's a great bank shot shooter. She right. she really is. I mean, you saw the eight she banked earlier. Yeah, her hands are freezing. Yeah, we got the hands in the pockets. I know the feeling, believe me, when my hands are frozen and I'm trying to stroke the ball, that my, my, my entire arm shakes. It's very tough to play in those conditions. Wow, very nice. I wonder if she can see the edge. She probably can't. I think she can see the entire ball. Yeah. Well, she can see the ball to hit it dead straight. I don't know if she can see enough to cut it in. If she can, she's going to go for that. If not, she's going to just bank the one ball and try to leave her, leave her behind the uh, the five ball. Oh, she's just going to hit it soft. Uh, did she hit it hard enough? Hmm. Fortunately not. I wonder if Jasmine can bank that one pass of four without hitting it. That appears to be what she's looking at. Yeah. Might want to leave it by the top rail or by the four. Ooh, dangerously close. She hit that great. She came dangerously close to running into that point. Looks like she has enough of the ball to make it, but it's not an easy shot, so I'm wondering if that's what she's calculating. Yeah, unfortunately for her, she wound up behind the four. This is a very, very important shot right here. This might determine whether she stays alive or ends up having to go home. Mm. Yeah, she's frustrated. I don't blame her. Didn't leave her an easy shot. I was going to say, the shot that she left her is not easy. With the cue ball on one rail and the object ball on mm -hmm. the opposite rail, and it looks like it's frozen to that off. Um, opposite side rail. Yeah, but Jasmine might be able to bank the two ball and freeze the cue ball near the, place the cue ball near the four ball. Or by the five seven, depending on how she feels like she can hit it, right? Try to put it by the four, didn't do it. She wasn't happy with that effort. I think she let her see just enough to make it. I, she did. Or at least Christina is approaching it like it's makeable. Let's see if she plays in the same pocket or just taps it and plays it in the side. I think she's going to play in the same pocket. Better shoot. She overhit it badly. key here is if she does run into the five ball she wants to hit the top of it I feel like she may have been off balance on that last yeah. shot and that may have affected her stroking and her momentum well she overcut that This is a big game here for Jasmine. It's to go on the hill.
Looks like she can see enough of the cue ball to do what she wants with it. Yeah, but because she could see just enough to hit it mm -hmm. and draw it back, she can really hit it far to the right, right. and get it, bring it closer. She's going to have to accept a longer shot unless she can follow. She can follow and avoid running into that seven ball. Then, then she's okay with getting closer to the six ball with follow. But she can't. She might have no choice but to draw it one rail, and take the longer shot on the six. Unless she hits it really hard and goes across twice. Oh, oh! She tried to go with inside spin. That's a tough shot. That's a very tough shot. Whew. I mean, before I do that, I'm, I mm -hmm. think I might hit it with low right and go across twice because I just feel more comfortable making that shot with speed, with outside spin. Right. There's those fundamentals again. Mm -hmm. Rock solid. They don't get any better than that, Keith. That's what I'm saying on that one shot where she overhit the, uh, the ball and ended up down in that far corner mm -hmm. and missed the four. I feel like it was because she was off balance. Yeah. Did she get there for the side? Came a little short. She's good, though. She's good there. Well, this to come within one, just when we thought that Jasmine was going to get on the hill, this is to come within one. And as I mentioned before, Christina has that controlled break where she's been controlling the one ball. We're going to go for a quick one minute break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. And we're back, Christina to break the balls. As I mentioned previously, she has been controlling the one ball extremely well by not overhitting the break, and I expect her to continue that pattern, given the fact that she's one away from tying the match at seven apiece. There it is. And there's that two ball. <laughs> Looks two like ball went a little further than what she would have hoped for to the point where you can't really pocket it in the side pocket there. Wonder if she could squeeze between the four and the seven. Or maybe just stop it in that area and shoot a play a safe on the two and leave the cue ball behind one of those five balls there. because she does have kind of an awkward angle here. Yeah. You think maybe she'll try and force it across? Well, if she can, if she can hit it with stun following the ladder right and, and have the angle, know that she had, because you can tell when you have the angle. But she's just probably just going to see. It looks like she's going to cinch it in and play a safe on it, too. Doesn't want to? Oh, she's, wow. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, if she's going to play a safe on the two, she m would have been better off just stopping it there. But I guess she was hoping to maybe spin it a little closer to the two ball. If she does go for this, which might not be a bad shot, she has four potential blockers or three potential blockers there. So you could just slow roll it and run into the eight. 
or go across and come off the other rail. There's the fundamentals. <laughs> She's going to beat him again it. on that three I, ball, I, too. I love it. I absolutely love it. Love watching her play. I mean, the, what, what, now we what, get fundamentals and the yeah. ball, the cue ball pinned on the rail. She's if she's gonna go for this and go three rails. She doesn't. It doesn't require spin for you to pocket this ball or play position. Oh, she oh. came short. Is it going in the side pocket? Is it? Is it? Is it? No. Wow. <clears throat> It's about as close as you can get to making a ball and, and not make it. It's touching everything but the bottom. Yeah. You know, this is actually one of my favorite shots. I teach the shot to my students all the time. Mm -hmm. If you can hit like three quarters of the ball, mm -hmm. you can double kiss this ball in and have the cue ball come back just enough to where you can see the four ball. It's a very little known shot. But I don't know if she can hit it full enough to do that. Because she's the three. Let's see if we can get a closer view at the three ball. Because if she's able to do that, she might end up spinning it around the seven, between the seven and the rail, and go two rails. Wow, how good she hit that. Did she get there? Phew. God, she got there. I mean, not perfect, but she's there. Oh, she was trying to hit the seven a little further than that. Just came up with the tip just enough to avoid hitting the cue ball pure draw because the speed was correct. She just didn't hit the cue ball where I think she wanted to. She's good, though, because she comes. Are you going to say something? Sorry. I was going to say, what pocket are we going for here? For the low left-hand corner pocket to play the seven in the same pocket. So you're going to go four rails or two rails. Oh, wow. Wow, That's I why I asked. Not, I was not expecting her to miss that, but I think she might have gotten away with it. Because I thought there might have been a little bit of a concern about that eight ball sim. Yeah. See, look. Oh, do you see that? Can we take another look at that? You can tell her tip literally moved towards the left when she was about to strike the ball. That's why she missed the ball. That means she was probably aiming it where she needed to in order to make it. Oh, uh, did she hit it hard enough to get to the top rail? She sure did. That was very, very good. That's great speed control right there. Whether she's going to go for this, she's trying to bank it two rails. Yep, two rails. Right underneath one of those balls. Man, she hit that good. I love watching a great safety battle. Well, she's going to try to it, put it, her right back where she was, but hopefully this time not letting her see the five ball at all, so that way she won't have the uh, defensive opportunity. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, it really is a game of chess. It is. Oh, she hit part of the ball. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh. Yes, that's why she apologized, yeah. because she knew she caught a roll. Big, 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 big game here. She either goes on the hill, or Christina ties it seven apiece. Oh, she avoided the scratch there. Look at this. Look at this. You always hope that if you leave your opponent a shot, you leave him with an awkward angle, and that's exactly what happened here. Let's see if she tries to put the key wall behind the 8 and the 9 while the 5 goes to the opposite long rail. Yep, that's what she's going for. Did she get there? You know, that's the second time she came short of the mark.
Well, you have a couple decisions on this shot. Yeah. I like the I like the double bank here. You double bank or overcut it and leave it by the top rail. But I kind of like the double bank here. If she can manage a cue ball to the point where she can draw it back a bit. Double bank. I think I'm pretty sure she wanted to hit it just maybe a hair thinner. It's just it's probably what the table gave her because now Christina can come off the top rail and send the five ball back down t down table behind potentially behind the eight and the nine. Unless she likes his bank. I was she gonna banked say, one earlier. <laughs> that bank seems to be there. She banks very well. And she made one similar to that yeah. before. Here it comes. Oh, she came short. She came short. As soon as I saw the ball coming towards the pocket, I knew she was coming short. She knew it, too. She knew it, too. You could tell by her body language. She knew she came short. So does Jasmine go up and down and back, or does she hit it soft? The way she's cooing, looks like she's going to go up and down. Yep. Pretty elementary from here. Yeah. And this, like I said, was a very, very important game for both players because it was either 7-7 seven, seven tie or Jasmine ends up getting the upper hand, which she does have, to get on the hill by the score of 8-6. to six. wonder what's going through her mind right now yeah yeah so she just hopes she gets another opportunity when it comes to the uh, uh, Christina any more updates for us with the other matches yeah let me see what I can find as we and remember folks we do have one more match coming after this at 9 p.m., I will be back in the booth with Mark White to do one more match, final match of the evening. Wing ball in. Where's that one ball going? I think there's a good chance she's out from here. Uh, I think there is as well. As I look at the scores from other matches from around the room, a whole lot of log jams going on. Pia Filler and Kawaharo tied 5-5. Allison Fisher and Wan Ling Wang are tied 4-4. Wow. Jin Hai Ju uh, is leading 6-4 over Chia Hu Chen. So every match we have in this room currently is is a bit of a nail biter. Yeah, I know where I'm going after this match to sweat some of those. I'm <laughs> gonna be right there with you. So I play the three down in that opposite corner, and then I guess follow up a little bit for the four ball. Yeah. Yeah, she can either follow up for the four ball or just stop it there and have a you know, slight draw shot to get on that side of the five ball. See, I think she's going to go for the stop shot. That's what it appears like she's... Little, wow. wow, I was not expecting that at all. 
I wonder if she. I, I wonder. If I, I called the method. I did not yeah. call the miss. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Chris, Christina can actually bank this. I mean, she decides to cut it in. She has to spin it in. I don't know if she can bank it in, though. She might because... She I think a spin is going to be a yeah. tough ask. Oh, yeah. how far oh, yeah. it shows from that corner pocket. She went for yeah, it. That was, that was tough. That was a very tough cut. Really was. I don't know. She left for the three though. It doesn't go. It doesn't look like it goes. I wonder if she's gonna try to hit the, the three off the six because it's a good shot. Three off the six, send it towards the eight, but try to leave the cue ball. No, she's gonna draw. She's gonna draw behind the nine. Leave the three ball there and draw it. Oh, but she didn't right hit it dead square. Pocket. She didn't hit the it dead square, pocket. Keith. I thought she was going to like draw in a dead straight line, like hit it dead straight, but she cut it. Wow, bizarre. So you come in one rail. Yeah, I don't know if she to get to the five. I don't know if she has enough angle to come between the five and the nine. If she does, she can spin it that way. If not, she's going to come above the nine. See, she has enough just to spin it. Stun out for the seven in the side from here. Mm hmm She just follow. Very soft follow. Hit it to the outside of the pocket to... Uh, Decrease the angle coming off the five. And let me tell you, I, I guarantee you, Christina is super related. <laughs> <laughs> to have had this opportunity because she might run out the set from here. She has the potential to run out the set. Very, very nice. Confident stroke. Hit it with authority. And it is within one to make it a hill kill match we will be take a quick short break for two minutes and be right back stay tuned
Okay, we're back. We're back. Christina breaking. For the entire match, she's pretty much controlled the break, controlled the one ball. I don't expect any changes at this point of the match. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that kiss right there. Now, the question is, is she going to draw between the four and the six ball? Or will she decide to stun follow it if she can cheat the pocket to draw? I, I, I think the draw is a shot here. Yeah. She appears straight in. Yeah. yeah. She's aiming low. Mm-hmm. So draw right in between them. Just like that. Hit it with perfect speed. You couldn't diagram that yeah. better. <laughs> well, I mean, she was hoping for a better angle there. She didn't exactly right. get a great angle there because now she has to play the three ball in the same pocket. I don't think she has an angle to go anywhere else because the five is preventing the three from going in the upper right-hand corner and the seven left-hand corner. So she's going to try to stun it over, I think, or she's going to draw it. Yep, yep, but the four is in the way. That's a problem with that shot. Oh, she got it over. She got it over. She got it over, Keith. We might have a hill hill here. Pretty sharp cut on that three ball, though. Yeah. Oh, the, her fundamentals think otherwise. <laughs> they've, well, yeah. yeah. No, I, know, I know what you're saying. They, I'm they've been, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. They've been proving us wrong this whole match. Yeah. See, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Expected nothing less. Knock him off the rail slightly for the five in the side, the six in the opposite side pocket. <clears throat> Or in the corner, it all depends. I just what if you decide to go for the side pocket here with the six, you need to make it your business to make sure you don't get straight on that six. You have more options if you play in the corner, but she has such a ni nice natural angle. Good choice there. I like that because you end up pos with position on the seven, no matter where you end up, straight, left side, right side. good thing about that is that she doesn't have to shoot over the nine. That would have been right. a disaster right there. Especially on the length of, yeah. you know, three quarters of the length of the table. Man, Jasmine, all she can do is hope and pray that she gets one more turn at the table. Steady. Look at this, how steady she is doesn't move at all that's why she hit that so perfectly I mean she got very nice on that nine ball and we all love our hill hill matches <laughs> and this one is going to the hill we have double hill <laughs> one more rack will decide who stays and who goes home Well, we said from the onset that this could be a heck of a compelling match. And it has been exactly that. Jasmine jumped out to an early 4-1 lead. Christina stormed back after an error by Jasmine. Win three straight, tie it. Jasmine jumped out ahead again, 7-4. Left Christina another window. And she's Christina's won four of the last five mm -hmm. to tie this. So this is everything you would want to see yes. from two top competitors. Agreed. Control the one ball again. Yep. And the two has access to the corner pocket. Still a little bit tricky here because now she has to contend and deal with the possibility of ending up 
behind the four or the nine. And quite possibly the the seven ball, but I mean she would have to hit it bad to even go near that. So I kind of like hitting it with enough speed to come off the rail she's shooting from and just take a longer shot on the two ball. Just to guarantee yourself a turn. Oh, she hit it hard. No. Whoa. I said potentially the seven. She would have to hit it real bad, and she almost did it. Wow. <laughs> she <laughs> almost wound up behind that seven ball. Now she's probably going to have to thread the needle between the three and the rail. Good. She has a natural angle to do that with a little bit of left spin. Oh, she, oh, she made it. She made it. She made it. Oh, my God. What a way. <laughs> what a way to win and what a way to lose. <sighs> That's rough. Jasmine has been through this many times throughout the years, and but she's also benefited from it as well. We all have. I love, 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 love what Christina's doing here. She realizes that she's screwed up, made a mistake, got lucky, click the refresh button like you would a page that doesn't load on your computer, and start all over. Jasmine sits there. Can't help but wonder if she's not thinking about that three ball that got away. Because it looked like smooth sailing in that rack yeah. to yeah. get out and then go home. Mm -hmm. Hit that yeah. side of the nine, and she's good as gold. And I'll just draw back about a foot and a half possibly two feet and she is on her way that's it congratulations <laughs> to Christina and congratulations to Jasmine Ocean on a great event both two of the top players on the planet right now and what a match that was. What a great, match that was. Uh, great match between two really amazing players. Yeah, oh, yeah. Keith, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the booth again. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in. We appreciate each and every single one of you. I will be back at 9 p.m. with Mark White to do the final match of the evening. Thanks again, and we will see you later. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, Tony. Thank you. Bye-bye.